is uh, Kevin Panic, and I've been climbing for about seven years. Most of that time, I think about this is my sixth season in Yosemite. Well, spring, summer, fall in Yosemite for the last six years. And uh, I'm from Southern California, like Ventura County area. I'm not sure any of that. I actually came here to learn trad climbing and to like initiate some entrance into big wall climbing and aid climbing. And that was the first summer. And I didn't really know much about the bridge. It wasn't until the second summer that I started coming around here. When I first came and got to hang out at the bridge, I didn't necessarily feel like totally welcome. It's welcome, you know, but it's, there was, uh, I was, I had these friends at the time that we, that uh, Tom Evans on his El Cap report has dubbed the Spray Brothers, which we would call the Baby Monkeys. <laughs> And uh, seeing their attitude towards wanting to talk about climbing and then seeing people that actually go climbing and complete climbs made this like really interesting air around the bridge of like those who can do and then those who want to do and those who just want to talk about it. It's a great place to uh, kind of just hang out in front of El Capitan and talk about systems for hours, you know, different ladder setups for your aid climbing, different daisy setups, different ways of using adjustable Fifi hooks or daisies or what have you. You get a lot of information or two to one hauling or heavy hauling or just every route like well what piece of gear you're gonna need. You just come to the bridge and you can just ask around and see who's done what, who's on first. And, uh, you get to learn a lot before you go up. Even if you know someone's famous it's like you're just a person on the bridge and so everyone's down to talk about rock climbing because we're all just rock climbers anyway and so you don't feel any less than or anything you can just kind of freely talk to whoever it is that you'd like and so anybody that comes and they want some beta or if they want some information on how to do a certain thing I'm very happy to like offer as much as I can because it's kind of like you People did that for you, so you return the favor and you keep this like positive circle of growth and learning going. Yeah, it was pretty interesting meeting uh, meeting Chango sitting there at the uh, at the bridge the other day. I mean, I've heard so much about every like his like quantum physics and then his um, all his books on his systems of aid climbing is very interesting. But one person who I was really like, uh, hanging out at the bridge, I met. Big Wall Kate, Kate, and she, I think she just did Bad Seed. She was a really interesting person. I was like, oh, wow, you're, you're Big Wall Kate, and then immediately started grilling her on questions about when she zippered Tribal Right and how you place rivets and how they, like, machine them out, and she was just really, just like all the other systems aid climbers, like, really dialed on saying all, like, little, little bits of detail, like, filing, like, the edges down and how far they're actually drilled in and if it's going to be like a regular scary pitch they'll probably drill it a bit farther and just all kinds of information but she was open to sharing too but that was one person who but chango was pretty interesting because he hasn't been allowed back here for a long time after having climbed el capitan on a number of different routes the business becomes pretty regular the variables that you're presented with, you know, kind of become like a certain probability of certain things happening and you can mitigate those things. And so it feels kind of like a weird hobby to just, you know, go hang out on the cliff for a few days, you know, get a little bit scared, try and challenge yourself on a new route. But if the route is within your level of difficulty, it's, you know, it's just kind of like a business as usual. It doesn't get so scary anymore. So it's kind of like a really awesome hobby to kind of to go do. <laughs> I don't know, it's a lifestyle, but it's also a little bit of a hobby because it doesn't feed you. The bridge is for everyone because you get nose in a day or so they're not really gear nerds. But then you hang out here and you can like, oh, it's like, oh, Mark's here. Like, I'm going to ask him what, what he does. Or Shane's here. He's like done the Salathe solo in a day on the speed record. Like, what does he do? I can just ask him. I'm like, Shane. How did you do this? Or, you know, we're trying to find a certain length of rope and like, hey, how did you do this? It's very cool. But definitely being able to talk with uh, Pete on Pete and Mark Hudon about like heavy hauling systems. 
because that's that's a little bit scary lowering out this massive payload of like 400 pounds of stuff across the wall and it's like all your beaners are tight you need to have like heavy beaners so that they can actually open under a lot of weight it's really interesting but being able to talk with the people here and find out about like uh like certain gear failure you know or like find out how like these like like certain jumars can like slip in a certain way there's like a really interesting like database right here